This is a Suzuki Iger 400, and these things are usually pretty bulletproof, but they do have one very common problem, and we're going to be dealing with that today. So I'm going to go ahead, get this back in the shop, and we can get to work. As I was saying, these Suzuki Igers are usually pretty bulletproof. They run a 376cc air-cooled four-stroke engine. Nothing's overly complicated on this. Single overhead cam, carbureted. For the transmission, they run an automatic CVT. This is the side we're going to have problems with. So the problem I'm talking about on this is on the flywheel, the magneto, the magnets actually come unglued, which can cause quite a few problems. Now in the 2000s, Articat ran the same 400 engine in their machines as the Suzuki Iger, and they were known to have the same problems. I actually have one here that has that problem. Let me go show you. Over here we have the 2004 Articat 400. This runs the same engine as the Suzuki Iger. This is what happens to these Suzuki Igers. If you look at this magneto, the magnets had broken off. You can see this one's broke. You can see somebody had glued it because that's not factory glue. They are glued on from the factory, but you can tell this is definitely not factory glue. <laughs> what happens on a lot of these, the glue will deteriorate from heat and oil, and then the magnets will just loosen up. A lot of times, they'll break off and break your stator. That didn't happen with this one, luckily, but uh, this one definitely needs a new flywheel. So a lot of the times, if your magnets loosen up, if for some reason they didn't get caught up in the stator in there, and they're just floating around, you'll still have some charging issues. So... We're going to check that. The owner's worried about that. He wants the upgrade. RM Stator makes an upgraded flywheel for this. Before we start this, we'll go ahead and check the voltage right now. We are at 12.1. Yeah, 12.1 volts. We'll go ahead and fire it up and see what we get. charging at 14 volts so that's a good sign but the owner still wants the upgrade for peace of mind which i don't blame him he's going to be plowing with it quite a bit and that takes quite a bit of juice using the winch all the time so if we put the upgraded part in there now he won't have to worry about it in the future we do have a little stutter sometimes see that a little bit of stutter First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drain out all that old gas. Get the seat off. We'll go ahead and pull this panel off. Just a couple of these push pins. Looks like it's missing a couple actually. And that one. And that can come off, exposing the engine. Then shut the petcock off. Pull the fuel line. Just like so. Throw my extended piece on there. Like I said, it didn't smell too good, so I just want to kind of see what it looks like here. It's a little bit yellow. While I'm waiting for this fuel to drain, I'm going to go ahead and remove this floorboard so it'll make it a little easier to access the side cover here. So on the sides here, it's just these little plastic push pins. A couple 10 millimeters. Usually these break because they rust because they see a lot of mud and water, but... These ones so far is so good. Hey, even that one come out. Nice. 
So we didn't break any bolts. That's always good. We didn't get this removed. So because we're removing this left side crankcase cover, we need to drain out all the oil. Otherwise, we're going to make a huge mess. We'll go ahead and get our oil pan under there. You're going to need a 21 millimeter to get that drain plug off. See the skid plate's off right now because of the little incident we had, but uh, that's okay. Go ahead and let that drain out. There's a little bit of junk on the end of our drain plug here. Can't tell if that's silicone or glue or what. It's a little funny. Well, at this point, we can go ahead and start removing this side cover. First things first, we'll remove the recoil cover. Which requires an 8mm and there's just 4 bolts that hold it. Go ahead, 14mm here. Remove the nut. Then this just slides out by hand. Sometimes they stick on there. This one's actually very clean. So it came out nice and easy. Go ahead and pull the shifter off next. That's a 10. That just slides out of there. Now we can just go to town with all the case bolts. I'm going to remove this speedometer gear because the speedo wasn't working. So I'll see if I can find something wrong there. It looks fine. Maybe the cable's busted. I don't know. Far so good. Go ahead. We do have one oil line here that we have to remove. We have a five millimeter Allen head. Get that out. Oh, now I got a leak. Continue on with our crankcase bolts. big one here so we're going to be removing this case so we're going to want to unplug our stator connections here so i like to come in on the back side here with some type of punch tap on this until it cracks open a little bit just like so go ahead and wiggle this back and forth until it pops out they stick on there pretty good Make sure we don't lose any of our gears. Oh, we almost lost our starter gear, but we saved it. All right, so this stator looks like an aftermarket to me. Green. Uh, doesn't look original, but I could be wrong, I guess. That is the original flywheel, though, or magneto. You know what else I just noticed? This doesn't have a gas. Somebody's definitely been in here. This doesn't have a gasket. Some kind of sealer, silicone, or something. It's supposed to have a gasket in there. There's no gasket at all. We'll go ahead and pull this flywheel bolt off. Or not, I mean. Now we're going to need a puller to go on here. And this just screws over the threads. <laughs> yeah. Popped off. Good. Go ahead and unscrew that. So right here is the factory magneto. And as you can see, it's glued in. You can see the orange glue in there. And this one actually looks pretty good. It doesn't look like it started delaminating or anything. But we're going to put the upgraded one in there. I'll show you what that looks like. Here we have a brand new one from RM Stator. For about 100 bucks, you can buy this and it's an upgrade. And as you can see, there is no magnets. I mean, there is magnets, but it's inside this shielded case. So unlike this one, where it can come unglued and those magnets can go all over the place, this one cannot do that because of that steel shield, which is a much better design. So uh, this does not come with the one-way bearing in the back, so we're going to have to replace that with this one. So what we're going to do is take our 6 millimeter Allen head on an impact. Start removing these bolts. Just 
just like so. This will pop right off of there. Give this a good cleaning. Then we can go ahead and install it on our new magneto. I like to clean off my bolts. And we're going to use some Loctite. Because we do not want these falling off. Then we'll just install it back on there. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our Magneto. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape all their old sealer off of here. Make sure we get it off the case, too. All right, so this goes back on. Now, when I'm pushing this on, I like to roll the ring gear a little bit so it goes on good. So now that we're on, we can put the nut on. This is another thing I like to put Loctite on. Should be good. Just like so. Alright, we can go ahead and throw our new gasket on now. First thing we want to do is we want to put our shifter in here. Because we want to line it up. So what we want to do is line these two marks up. We can go ahead and put our starter gears in. Now you can leave this on the case. However, I like to have everything on the engine. That way the case is empty when I put it on. We go everything's into place careful to line everything up just so usually like to seat that by hand now we just go ahead and reinstall all our bolts go ahead start all my bolts I'm not looking to tighten these down, I'm just looking to snug them up and then I'll go ahead and torque them all. I like to do a staggered pattern so everything tightens up evenly. Alright, now our shifter can be mounted. Plug our wiring back in. So as far as this speedometer drive goes, it seems to be working. It must be either the speedometer or the speedometer cable that's bad. But we're going to throw a new gasket on here. So we'll peel the old one off. And the new one can go on. Put some bolts in. But to check this speedometer cable, I'm gonna throw a flat screwdriver in there, rotate it, see if it's spinning up by the speedometer. If I disconnected it off the speedometer, it's right here. Go ahead and rotate this. And it does not appear to be moving, so it's the speedometer cable that's busted. I know the owner wasn't too worried about that, so we're just going to throw it back on there for now. Get our oil line on there. Almost back again. And put our recoil back on there. Now we're going to remove our oil filter. But the oil in that almost looks like it's got water. I might be a little concerned if this was a liquid cooled machine because I'd think possibly a seal or the head gasket had gone. 
But this is oil cooled. There's no antifreeze in it at all. So it must have just took on water at one point. Never know. It might actually be condensation. I've seen condensation build up so much in some of these things that it looks like it took on water. I'm going to go ahead and remove the sump cover as well. And I'm glad I did look at all the junk in that sump filter. Don't feel me now, Milwaukee. Beautiful. These things bite great. Man. Hold it up into the light. Yeah, look at that. That's a lot of oil being blocked off in there. Man, I think a lot of this debris it's from that magneto side cover when they did that job and uh it's not silicone it is hard stuff it's some type of sealer but it is hard that is why you do not want to use a lot of excess stuff like that it's much cleaner now still a couple spots i can try to get out but i feel bad for that oil pump i bet it was working hard to push all that oil through that crap go ahead and put this back up in here little Loctite on the threads. It's definitely that sealer they used. Go ahead and remove this rubber. And clean her out. Oh, that's better. Now I can go ahead and put the sump cover on. Go ahead and torque these down. And we can put our drain plug in there. Always want to remember to torque them down. Take our new oil filter, add a little oil. A little around the gasket. Go ahead and install the filter. Just want to hand tighten them. Now our oil, always want to make sure we clean around the cap first. Don't want any dirt getting in the engine. gonna need four quarts to fill this up because it holds around 3.2 to 3.4 quarts i like to dump around three quarts in and then check the level there we go so i got three quarts in it go ahead and stick this in shows halfway up the dipstick pull the cap off just turn it over get her turning over a minute Remember to put your spark plug cap back on. Now we'll check the level and refill. Yeah, see it's a little lower now. Go ahead and put some fresh fuel in it. Fuel line. Go ahead and fire it up. So the service manual says to run several minutes, shut it off, let it sit three minutes, and then check the oil. All right, it's sat three minutes. Let's check her out. Well, that's perfect. I'm going to throw these plastics back on, then we can try her out. I would say the Suzuki Iger is all set and ready to go back to its owner. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one.